Last week, I gave a puzzle challenge, which was to see how much redstone dust you can directly power with a single lever. The best I was able to do was 7,618, and this was also the best out of the solutions that were sent to me as well. These other two numbers here, uh, 7,782 is the theoretical limit. So that is 50% of the total volume that you can reach. The best you can do is 50% of that volume being redstone dust because every redstone dust has to be on top of some kind of supporting block that's not redstone dust. You could do some weird glitchy stuff where redstone dust floats on top of redstone dust. I decided to exclude that from my attempts at this puzzle. The rest of this video is me explaining how I got that number and why I think it is or is very close to the best possible. The first thing I did was to visualize how far redstone dust can reach from a single central powered block. That's an oversimplification already because with the lever we'd have two central power sources one which is the lever and another which is the block the lever is attached to but you know start small start simple here's the shape of all the blocks that can be powered with a direct redstone dust connection to a single central source of power it's 14,398 blocks you can figure out that based on that 50 percent rule i gave earlier 7,440 is the most amount of redstone dust you can power from a single central source block. That's the theoretical limit, so next I tried to start actually wiring some of these, like how far can we get? And very quickly we run into the main problem of this puzzle. Redstone dust can run sideways, you can run it down a block, and you can run it up a block. Running power upwards is really easy because you can do a ladder like this that hits the perfect 50% density of redstone dust, because we have every other block is redstone dust, every other block is a supporting structural block. Downwards gets a lot harder, because we can't use a simple downwards ladder. We can do a spiral of some kind, but solid blocks cut downwards connections. But we need solid blocks because transparent blocks won't pass redstone power downwards. By the way, this a uh, problem doesn't happen in bedrock addition, so for bedrock addition, the theoretical limit of how much dust you can attach to a lever pretty much is the practical limit as well. Maybe like minus one because of the lever itself or something like that. So here, I had to start getting around this downwards wiring trouble. Now seems like a good time to turn on a vanilla tweaks resource pack so this will show the power level of the redstone dust at each spot. And so I carried on with this. I tried a bunch of different shapes for downwards laddering. I call these the roots of the redstone jumble. Next I looked at, you know, whether or not you should put the lever on top, bottom, or side. The side gave the best results for the maximum. By the way, you can rule out putting the lever on top pretty quickly because it gives the same direct connections as putting the lever on the bottom, except you can't put redstone dust on top anymore. Putting it on the side is better because there's more reachable blocks. Another advantage to putting redstone dust on the side is that the edge here is an odd number of blocks, which is really nice because if you're doing upwards laddering, you can start with redstone in the bottom. You'd have, you know, some kind of support block beneath the redstone dust, and then support block, dust, all the way up to the top. And this top redstone dust is still within reach. The problem with putting the lever on the bottom instead of the side is that these edges are now an even number of blocks, which means say you power the bottom one, supporting block beneath, it's own dust. Now, your top block is, well, just a supporting block, and you can't put redstone dust here, because it's now too low. The strength can't reach from your central power source. The big thing I learned from these experiments was that you can get 50% redstone dust coverage in almost the whole volume of the shape. The blocks that you miss always occur in the bottom two layers of your big jumble of dust. The reason for that is they're the only two layers that have to be powered from above. So every other layer of redstone dust in here can receive power from below and, you know, sending power upwards from below is a lot easier because of the 
uh, transparent block versus solid block laddering I showed a second ago. But on the bottom here, power has to come from above, and anywhere that we run power to from above with a solid block, we're cutting off power to the redstone dust beneath it. Uh, the, the chests here don't do anything, they're just to make it easier to see where we're missing redstone dust. So these are just marking the spot where we'd have power level zero. With that in mind, I started working instead on running power downwards, trying to figure out how to do that optimally. When it comes to the bottom two layers, there's really only a handful of shapes you can use to get power down to the very bottom. So you can see here, I have a bunch of different root structures branching out downwards, getting power to the bottom two layers. And then what I did next was I looked at all the different shapes these roots could take on the very last two layers. And I found a good way to compare and contrast these shapes. It's to look at the second to last layer of redstone dust. So the second to last layer of redstone dust in here is going to be 14 by 14, so 196 blocks we got to cover. And each one of these kind of little root hairs, these very tips of the root structure of our uh, laddering configuration will cover, you know, X amount of the second to the last layer of redstone dust and forces us to miss a certain amount of redstone dust. This configuration, for example, covers seven of the second to last layer, so uh, six covered being powered and one covered being unpowered and forces us to miss three redstone dust in total out of the last two layers. So I'm counting how many redstone dust are accounted for in the second to last layer and how many redstone dust are left unpowered in the last two layers. I know that's not a straightforward way to measure these shapes and how they compare. Looking at it this way gives a really nice interpretation of this puzzle in terms of tiling and 2D geometry. To make visualizing this a bit easier, I took this like diamond shaped 14 by 14 grid and rotated it 45 degrees so that it's just a you know square so these are all 14 by 14 squares that represent the kind of like bottom most root structure of our downward laddering configurations see this one almost covers like a little two by two square in the second to last redstone dust layer two by two looking at these four bits of dust and the chest which represents an unpowerable redstone dust I represent with a little two by two square here and then similarly right here we have a two by three representing that here with a two by three rectangle so for all the different shapes you could make getting power to the bottom most layers I counted up how many redstone dust they force unpowered so for instance this bow tie shape here as uh, the orange tile there so you can kind of see it's like two two by two squares that share a corner so two by two square, two by two square, they share a corner. This misses three redstone dust. So there's three redstone dust, which are forcibly unpowerable with this configuration here. And the three is circled because the bow tie is the most efficient. It covers the most blocks in the second to last layer with the least amount of forced unpowerable redstone dust. Every other one has a two to one coverage to unpowerable ratio say so take this one uh, it's a heart-shaped root hair uh, represents this configuration here of roots it covers eight redstone dusts in the second to last layer and leaves four redstone dusts unpowerable in the last two layers you get eight blocks covered for four left unpowered and same thing here, you get six covered for three left unpowered, four covered for two left unpowered. All have a two to one ratio, except the bow tie. The bow tie covers seven, but leaves three unpowered. And so the next challenge is basically to arrange a bunch of these little root hairs together so that you're covering the whole 14 by 14 uh, second to last layer of redstone dust and squeezing in as many bow ties as possible. So here I found some four bow tie layouts. Then I got up to eight, and then finally 10 was the best I was able to do here. And I found it easier to measure these using the second to last layer instead of the very last layer of redstone dust, because the second to last layer, as I worked on this, felt like it was a freebie. Meaning like, as long as you were optimally powering the second to last layer, the very last layer would be optimally powered as well. That's one of the places where I'm not really sure how airtight my 
like logic here was, and there might be room for improvement. Before we finish the tile puzzle though, there's a caveat I have to mention. If you look at the bottom two layers of some kind of, you know, root structure wiring here, there's almost like three zones inside of this. So there's the very bottom most layer, which is special because it's only powerable from the underside of your source block. Similarly, the second to last layer on the edge, represented by these chests here, has to be powered from the side. Lastly, there's all the redstone dust in the second to last layer that's not on the edge, so everything in there. This skirt here is kind of unavoidable loss. That's because anywhere that you try to power a block on the skirt, so say this redstone dust here, you'll end up unpowering more blocks than you save. So there we've gotten power to this block on the skirt, but we've cut off power to I think three more redstone dust inside. So all in all, it actually reduced how many redstone dust we were able to power by two. There is one exception to that, and that's at the corners. If you run power directly from the side of your source of power, you can reach three blocks on the skirt, so these three here, but you only cut off two. So it's a savings of one block. And you can't use this trick on all four corners, because if you did, so you, you know, you ran power directly downwards from all four sides of your power source here, you've now cut off the underside, which means the entire bottom layer of redstone will be left unpowered. Similarly, if you were to do this corner trick on three of the corners, you would save one redstone dust on these three corners, but now you'd essentially create a secondary skirt on the edge of the bottommost layer, which would add, you know, like 31 missed redstone dust, which isn't worth saving one. The best compromise I was able to find was to use this corner trick on two opposite corners. So this way you're not cutting off power from the underside. It can get, you know, all the way to the bottom layer on all edges, but you're still getting that two redstone dust savings at each of the corners. With that in mind, I went back to the whole bow tie thing and marked out the corners. Uh, this is the footprint created by the root structure needed for the corner trick. And now we have to try to fill in around this with the shapes we have over there using as many bow ties as possible. And there, the best I was able to do was eight. We can total everything up now. We have 196 blocks in the second to last layer, and most of our shapes had a two to one coverage to loss ratio. So if we have 196 blocks that we need to cover and a two to one coverage to loss ratio, it means we're gonna lose 98 redstone dust without using any bow ties. So with the bow ties, you know, if you were to take a pair of them, together they cover 14 blocks, so you would expect a loss of seven redstone dust from that coverage. However, the bow ties each only cause three blocks of loss. So between these two, we cover 14 and we lose six. So we actually now have saved redstone dust. In total, we're saving one redstone dust that we can now power for each pair of bow ties. So in the bottom layer here, uh, by the way, this is the root structure that corresponds to this tiling. We have eight bow ties for each pair. We save redstone dust, so we're saving four redstone dust. And all in all, we're losing 94. So this root structure here, it's the best I was able to come up with and is 94 redstone dust less than that perfect 50% coverage. That's not counting the skirt. So with the skirt taken into account, which is 60 redstone dust, I believe, around the skirt, saving two redstone dust, one at each corner, the skirt now contributes 58 redstone dust loss to our final total, which means all in all, we're 94 plus 58 or 152 redstone dust less than that perfect 50% density. And this right here is that 152 block loss root structure that we came up with using the tiling and the corner tricks and all that nonsense. And to convert this into a solution, all you do is need to upwards ladder uh, from all points until you ran out of signal strength. And you'd get 7,288 total redstone dust powered for a lever on top. But I mentioned earlier that a lever on the side gave a better theoretical limit. So next I took that approach and modified it to work 
with a lever on the side. A lever on the side is trickier because your shape isn't symmetrical anymore. The side with the block the lever is attached to is going to have a different shape than the side with the lever itself. For the tiling problem, this means that we don't have a perfect 14 by 14 square anymore. We have a 15 by 15 square with this weird missing diagonal. Uh, that's just the shape you get when you take this and rotate it back 45 degrees. And again, I just did it this way because I found it easier to think about it and look at it this way. And then here again, using missing corner trick, the best I was able to do was six bow ties in here, which means a savings of three. I also did some experiments to see if the missing corner trick was better used in line with the lever and the block it's attached to or uh, perpendicular to them. It ended up being better to do in line with the lever and the block it was attached to. Took this configuration, built up the corresponding root structure, filled it all in, and that gives us the total. My guess is that this is the best possible you can do on this puzzle. I'm not 100% sure, but what you would have to do to beat it is you'd have to figure out how to fit eight bow ties in here instead of six. And there might be a way to do that. If there is, I wasn't able to find it, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Or lastly, you could play on Bedrock Edition, in which case you can probably, you know, get like 7,780. My name's Chris. Thanks for watching.